Magandang umagang muli mga kapatid. Narito po akong muli upang magbahagi ng mensahe mula sa salita ng ating Panginoon. Sa umagang ito ay pag-uusapan natin ang kahalagahan ng muling pagkabuhay ni Jesus sa ating buhay. Kung bakit ang pagkabuhay ni Jesus muli ay napakahalaga sa ating pananampalataya at sa ating pag-asa. Kaya ang paksa natin ngayong umaga ay pinamagatan kong Hope Beyond the Grave. Bago po ang lahat ay basahin muna natin ang ating uh, text na matatagpuan sa Matthew chapter 28 verse uh, 1 to verse 7. Nang magtatapos ang araw ng Sabat, nang nagbubukang liwayway na ang unang araw ng Sanglinggo, ay nagsiparoon si Maria Magdalena at ang isa pang Maria upang tingnan ang libingan. At narito, lumindol ng malakas sapagkat bumaba mula sa langit ang isang anghel ng Panginoon at naparoon at iginulong ang bato at nakaupo sa ibabaw nito. Ang kanyang anyo ay tulad sa kidlat at ang kanyang pananamit ay maputing parang niebe. At sa takot sa kanya, nagasipanginig ang mga pantay at nangaging tulad sa mga taong patay. At sumagot ang anghel at sinabi sa mga babae, huwag kayong mga takot, sapagkat nalalaman ko na inyong hinanap si Jesus na pinako sa krus. Siya'y wala rito, sapagkat siya'y nagbangon. Ayon sa sinabi niya, Magsiparito kayo, tingnan ninyo ang dakong kinalagyan ng Panginoon, at magsiyaon kayong madali. At sa kanyang mga alagad ay sabihin ninyo, siya ay nagbangon sa mga patay, at narito siya ay nangunguna sa inyo sa Galilea. Doon makikita ninyo siya, narito nasabi ko na sa inyo. Dahil ang ating uh, eternal uh, destiny founded on the truth of Jesus' resurrection, Satan throughout centuries actually tried to discredit its validity. Gusto niya pabulaanan ang katotohanan ukol sa muling pagkabuhay gamit ang iba't ibang teorya. Maraming teorya na naisulat trying to point out that the resurrection of Jesus Christ was a lie or kasinungalingan lang at, nalil, at nililis nila ang katotohanan sa pamamagitan ng maling uh, interpretasyon at pananaw However, the history of his bodily resurrection has been examined and investigated by uh, many scholars, theologians, professors, and other researchers over the century at kahit na maraming teorya ang lumalabas trying to disprove this important event, hindi pa rin maikakaila o mapapasubalian ang katotohanan patungkol sa kanyang muling pagkabuhay. The clarity and convincing evidences are reliable. Now, bago tayo dumako sa mga detalye patungkol sa layunin, at kahalagahan ng muling pagkabuhay ni Jesus sa ating buhay ay uh, ating po muna nga tunghayan ang mga pangunahing teorya na aking nabanggit na sa, na sa ngayon ay uh, namamayagpag para sirain ang ebidensya ng muling pagkabuhay. Pag-aralan natin kung ito ay uh, naglalaman ng uh, logical na ebidensya or sapat na rason para maniwalang tao ng resurrection nga ay uh, kasinungalingan lang. Unang teorya ay ito yung tinatawag nilang the swan theory. It is also called uh, the resuscitation theory. Ang teoryang ito ay uh, naipropose noong 1828 by uh, H.E.G. Paulos. Ito ay isang uh, Uh, German na uh, theologian at it, siya rin ay nagkikriticize sa Biblia. He claims that uh, Jesus did really not die and he merely fainted or parang nawalan lang siya ng malay habang siya ay nakapako sa krus because of uh, pain, 
shock and loss of uh, blood. Then the apostles mistakenly uh, buried him alive. Now, let us examine if this theory hold any uh, merit. Tingnan natin ang historical facts of the resurrection. Uh, ayon sa history, madugo ang pagpalo at paghampas sa kanya ng mga Roman guards. Jesus was so uh, weak at that time after his uh, torture that he could not carry the, the beam of his cross going to the site where he was crucified. Nilagyan ng pako ang kanyang uh, wrist at paa at hinayaan itong uh, uh, nagdurugo habang siya ay nakapako sa krus ng uh, anim na oras. Tinusok ang kanyang tagiliran ng uh, sibat para masiguro ang kanyang uh, kamatayan. Jesus was prepared for burial according to Jewish uh, custom and his body was wrapped by linen and spices. And Jesus was then uh, entombed Siya in living and put a heavy rock across the entrance. A group of uh, soldier or guards vigilantly guarded the entrance to make sure no, that nobody can steal Jesus' body. Now, ang teoryang ito ay uh, sinasabi na dahil sa lamig sa loob ng kanyang uh, libingan, si Jesus ay uh, nagkamalay. Pagkatapos ng uh, ilang araw, ikatlong araw, siya ay lumabas sa kanyang libingan. Ayon sa teorang ito na mahirap paniwalaan ay sa kabila daw ng uh, kanyang uh, mahinang kondisyon, nagawa pa rin daw niyang uh, tanggalin no? ang binalot na saplot o tela sa kanyang uh, katawan. Tapos uh, pumunta sa bukana ng uh, kanyang libingan kahit napakadilim at ginulong niya ang malaking uh, batong nakaharang ano, para siya ay makalabas at ang uh, masaklap pa dito ay uh, nagkalakad siya ng malayo no, para puntahan ang kanyang mga disipulo na samantalang ang kanyang uh, paa ay uh, butas dahil sa pakong ipinako at di man lang napansin ano ng mga nagbabantay sa kanya ng mga soldier can you imagine that? the most significant problem with uh, this uh, theory is that it is uh, greatly underestimate the severity of Jesus uh, wounds or his uh, condition historical sources confirm that Jesus was extremely tortured and confirmed dead by several sources before he was uh, removed from the cross. Uh, Attorney Joseph Rickens wrote an article examining this uh, swan theory. He said, even in his weakened uh, condition, in a quiet private cemetery, Jesus manages to push back the stone door without any of the guard noticing. Why go halfway? Jesus has been uh, whipped, beaten, and stabbed. He is uh, hemorrhaging and hasn't had any food or drink for at least three days. Does he just push the stone open to squeeze through? Sabi niya. No, he pushes the, uh, the stone door completely out of the way. Ito yung kanyang uh, comment. Uh, comment. At sabi rin ni Hampton na uh, Kathleen, siya ay uh, graduate ng Dallas Theological Seminary, nagkomento siya. At ito ang kanyang komento, If Christ had only sown or nawalan lang ng malay, he still would have still been half dead. No? A great deal of time would have been needed for recuperation. In his weakened condition, he could not have walked the seven miles on the Emos Imos Road, it would have been impossible for someone who had only resuscitated from the agonies the Lord endures with the beatings and crucifixion to so quickly give the impression that he was the conqueror of death and the, gra and the grave, the prince of life. Yun ang kanyang sinabi. 
Now, how about the case of the Roman guards? Could the Roman guard have been asleep? Natutulog pa sila? So that Jesus managed to escape? Sabi naman ni Peter Kreef, no, a popular writer of Christian uh, philosophy and uh, theology, siya rin ay tinaguri ang apologist, no, taga-depend ng pananampalataya. Sabi niya that story, the Jewish uh, authorities spread that the guards fell asleep and the disciples told the body is unbelievable. Roman guards would not uh, fall asleep on a job like that. If they did, they would lose their lives. Yun ang kanyang komento. And even if they'd fall asleep, the crowd and the effort and the noise, it would have been taken to move an enormous uh, boulder would have waken them. Ito yung kanyang komento. So, kung nga titignan natin, ang teoryang ito ay katawa-tawa. It is uh, ridiculous. No? It's not believable. Pangalawang teorya ay yung tinatawag nilang hallucination theory. No? Sinabi naman ng uh, teoryang ito na ang mga taong nakakita kay Jesus ay sila ay naghahallucinate lang. No? O namamalikmata lang. Meaning, hallucination are entirely subjective or personal no? na pananaw. Since uh, uh, science tells us that generally only particular kind of uh, person or particular kinds of people have hallucinations. No? Uh, dagdag pa dito, a person who are uh, paranoid according to science experience hallucination or the people who have schizophrenia or people under the influence of drugs. So, Dr. Uh, Havermas, writer of a book about resurrection, ay nag-comment din, no? The New Testament tells us, however, that all kinds of people saw Jesus after His resurrection. Different ages, different uh, occupations, different background, ano? different viewpoints. At ito ang comment ni Gary Habermas. Sabi niya, These different individuals in each of these circumstances would all be candidates for hallucinations really stretches the limits of credibility. Again, sabi ni Peter Kreef, na mention natin kanina, sabi niya, hallucination usually happen only once, except to the insane, yung mga siraulo. This one return many times to ordinary people. So hallucinations do not uh, cause people to change or create new beliefs. Ang katotohanan na maraming tao ang naniniwala kay Jesus, pagkatapos na siya ay uh, uh, makausap, uh, mahawakan ang kanyang mga sugat, ay sapat na ebidensya para pabulaanan ang hallucination theory. Hallucination are an individual event. Uh, if 500 people have uh, the same uh, hallucination, no? nako, iyan ay mas malaking milagro kaysa milagro ng pagkabuhay muli. Again, this theory did not present logical uh, evidence. Now, ang pangatlong teorya ay ito naman, the conspiracy theory. This Conspiracy uh, theory suggests that Christ's disciples simply uh, stole the, uh, his body and fabric fabricated the resurrection story. Ninakaw nila. Ang teorang ito ay pagnanakaw sa katawan ni Kristo at sinabing uh, nag-resurrect ang ating Panginoon. Si Eusebius, isang great uh, historian during uh, 314 to 318 AD, siya ang unang uh, kumontra sa teoryang ito sinasabi sa kanyang argument. Sabi niya, this is inconceivable that such a well-planned and thought-out conspiracy could succeed. No? Hindi niya ma-imagine how the disciples might have motivated each other to take this uh, route 
ang sasabihin sa kanilang mga uh, mga kasamahan hey halik kayo at sama-sama uh, tayong inventohin ang istorya at palabasin natin na may milagrong nangyari na nabuhay muli si Jesus at uh, napakita siya sa atin kahit hindi totoo paniwalain natin ang marami hanggang sa ating kamatayan why not die for nothing why dislike torture and weeping inflicted for no for no good reason let us go out and, uh, to all the nation and overthrow their institution and denounce their gods and even if we don't convince anybody at least will have the satisfaction or drawing down on ourselves the punishment of our own deceit. See? Hindi niya lubos ma-imagine na gagawin yun ng class ang mga tao para palabasin lang na si Kristo ay nabuhay kung hindi ito totoo. No? Sabi nga, pwede ba itong gawin ng maraming tao na nasa katinuan ng pag-iisip? Ito isang kalokohan. Sabi nga ni Chuck Colson, special uh, counsel ni uh, President uh, Nixon during the Watergate uh, scandal in the 1960s, knows very well how difficult it is to keep a conspiracy together. No? Sabi nga niya, I know how impossible it is for a group of people, even some of the most powerful in the world, to maintain a lie. The Watergate cover up only a few weeks before the first conspirator broke and turned state's evidence. Then, ayon kay Paul Little naman, uh, he is a theologian and author of uh, many books, sabi niya, men will die for what they believe to be true, though it may actually be false. They do not, however, die for what they know is a lie. So again, this uh, theory is not acceptable. No? Pang-apat na theory ay um, the unknown Tom theory. No? This uh, theory explained that the disciples did not know where the tomb was located and could not have found the empty grave. Naligaw daw ang mga disipulo ni Jesus at ibang uh, libingan ang kanilang napuntahan. Ano? Ang teorang ito ay uh, naniniwala na ang mga naipako o naipapako sa krus ay tinatapon na lang sa hukay. No? Sama-sama at hindi sila pinapayagan na malibing sa marangal na libingan. Now, according to Joss uh, McDowell, isa siyang uh, manunulat, at isang uh, aklat na sinulat niya na may pamagat na resurrection factor, this theory, sabi niya, disregard totally the historical narrative about the events surrounding Christ's burial and the post-resurrection scene. Scripture tells us actually the body of Christ was uh, prepared for burial according to the co uh, burial customs of the Jews. The woman sat opposite the tomb and watch. Not only did Joseph of Arimathea and the woman know where the tomb was, so did the Romans. They placed a guard there. Again, this story or theory did not present the valid evidence. Panglimang teorya na ating titignan ay yung tinatawag nilang impersonation theory. Ang teoryang ito ay nagtuturo ng uh, Panginoong Yesus na nagpakita sa mga disipulo ay di totoong Yesus kundi nagkunwari Yesus lamang kaya natawag na impersonation theory ang basihan ng teorya ng ito ay yung uh, eksena na bakit daw hindi na recognize o nakilala ng mga taong pinagpakitahan uh, niya sa samantalang matagal na siya ay nakasama Now, how we dispute this uh, belief? First, the disciples were reluctant to believe in the resurrection. They were doubtful and would have been hard to convince unless it was really him. Like the case of uh, Thomas, no? Na gusto niyang isuot muna yung kanyang uh, 
uh, daliri sa butas ng kanyang mga kamay. It would have been impossible to impersonate Christ once. This was Christ's proof to Thomas that it was really him in uh, John chapter 20 verse 24. At times their uh, inability to recognize him was a, a phenomenon of his glorified body brought about by his own purpose that is written in Luke chapter 24 verse uh, 16. At itong sinasahad ng verse. But their eyes were restricted that they should not recognize him. So, isa pa na pwede nating uh, masabi, they were meeting in locked cham chambers in some instances and he suddenly appeared in his glorified body. No one could impersonate such a miraculous act other than the resurrected Jesus. So, this theory is not viable. Okay. Now, let's proceed to the last theory. Tim tinatawag nilang spiritual resurrection theory. This theory believed that Jesus Christ's resurrection was not a real physical resurrection. Uh, according to the proponents of this uh, theory, no? they state that Christ's body remained in the grave and his real resurrection was spiritual in nature. Pero yung katawan niya ay nandoon pa rin sa libingan. No? Now, paano natin ito sasagutin? Let's consider the fact that oh, yung physical body ni Christ disappeared from the tomb. Nawala. If it was only a spiritual resurrection, then what happened to the body? Saan napunta ang kanyang katawang lupa? History shows there was a body there and it, uh, it disappeared. Ang mga kaaway ni Kristo ay di kayang mag-produce ng katawan para uh, mapabulaanan ang pagkabuhay ulit ni Jesus. Dagdag pa rito, the resurrection uh, accounts are not presented in uh, parabolic or symbolic language but it presented as a fact. Ayon sa pagkakasulat, siya ay nahaplos, no? nahawakan, nakausap, and he even ate with the disciples. Luke chapter 24 verse 30 and John chapter 21 verse 12. So, even sa sinasabi ni Pablo sa 1 Corinthians chapter 15, si Kristo ay nabuhay kasama ng kanyang katawan. He possessed a glorified body which is uh, which had unique capacities. 1 Corinthians also chapter 15 verse 44 uh, Paul calls it spiritual body but it was the physical body as well. So take note the following facts about the body of Christ. Maraming mga verses sa Biblia na nagpapatutuo, nagpapatunay na si Kristo, he appeared in different form. Mark chapter 16 verse 12. He could eat, though it was not needed for sustenance. Luke chapter 24 verse 30. He could appear and disappear and could pass through solid object. Verse uh, chapter 20 ng John verse 19 at verse 26. He could uh, pass in a moment from one place to another. And according to Paul in Philippians 3.21 shows that his body was glorious and unique but nevertheless is still a body according to which our bodies will one day be produced. Again, this theory is not acceptable. No? Yung spiritual uh, resurrection theory. Diba nakakagulat na maraming uh, tao ang napapaniwala sa mga teoryang ito na ating uh, nabanggit na puno ng mga butas ang katuruan at kasinungalingan. Pero yung totoong uh, katotohanan ukol sa pagkabuhay muli ng ating Panginoon ay di nila matanggap at mapaniwalaan. Ang mga disipulo ni Jesus, though they face uh, terrible uh, persecution,
they never renounce their belief or their faith in the resurrection of Jesus. We can trust the radical transformation of Jesus' early followers because we can clearly see the Holy Spirit in action today working to transform, transform our lives as well. In spite of all these theories trying to disprove the validity of the body the resurrection of Jesus, still historical accounts providing a lot of refutable evidences that Jesus is truly resurrected. This truth provides hope beyond for those people who truly believe in their heart and, in, and put their trust in Jesus. Now, we are going to, uh, to look at the importance of Christ's resurrection in our lives. First, the, re the resurrection of Jesus Christ is important foundation of our Christian belief. Jesus' resurrection from the dead was the crowning achievement that forever separates him from any other religious leader who has ever been or ever lived. No other religious uh, figure in history has uh, ever prophesied his own death and resurrection and then accomplished it. Second, Jesus' resurrection from the dead is very important because it fulfilled prophecy. Jesus prophesied his resurrection in many passages in the Bible. During uh, Jesus' times, maraming taong uh, napapako sa cross dahil sa kanilang krimen o paglabag sa kay Cesar. No? So, ang katotohanan okol sa pagkapako ni Jesus ay hindi big deal because many suffered the same uh, way or the same fate. However, here is the difference. No? The bodies of those other people who are crucified are still in their graves. But Jesus rose from the grave. The evidence is the empty tomb. Kung hindi nabuhay muli si Jesus, there would be no convincing reason to believe that He is God and Savior. Subalit so, dahil sa katotohan ng siya ay nabuhay muli, he confirmed his claim to be God. Matthew 27 verse 63. Pangatlo, kung gaano ito ka-importante sa atin, Jesus' resurrection, also important because our justification or kaligtasan centers on it. Dito na kasintro ang ating kaligtasan. He was delivered over death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. dead Savior cannot save. Never. But we have a living Savior who justifies us and makes intercession for us. He wrote 7 verse 20, 25. No? So, pang-apat, the resurrection of Jesus is important to our faith and hope. If Christ's body was not resurrected, we have no hope that ours will be. In fact, kung walang pagkabuhay muli, we have no salvation and we have no hope of eternal life. Sinabi nga ni Pablo, ang ating pananampalataya ay walang saysay, useless. At ang kapangyarihang magbibigay buhay ng mabuting balita ay mawawalan din ng saysay kung si Kristo ay di nabuhay muli. 1 Corinthians 15 is a detailed explanation of the importance of Jesus' resurrection. In verse 14, uh, it states that if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. In fact, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is useless. You are still in your sins, according to verse 17, and believers who have died are lost, verse 18 ng Corinthians. Jesus rose from the dead and Paul presents the event, that event as the only thing that gives us hope in this life. Christ was the first to permanently raise from the dead, clearing the way 
for a future resurrection for all who believes. Ang kanyang claim na may kapangyarihan siyang magbigay ng buhay na walang hanggan ay mapagkakatiwalaan natin sapagkat siya mismo. Siya mismo ang tumalo sa kamatayan dahil sa muli niyang pagkabuhay. When Jesus Christ was resurrected, He became the first fruit. The first fruit of all who would be raised. Colossians 1.18 What is the first fruit mean? Ibig sabihin nito, example natin yung mga Israelita, ang mga Israelita ay dinatala ang unang ani bilang representative ng kabuuan nilang ani sa priest bilang offering nila sa Diyos. They could not fully harvest their crops until they brought a representative sampling. That is what they call the first fruit to the priest. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 10. So, this is what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 20 to 22. Christ's own resurrection was the first fruits of the resurrection harvest of the believing dead. Ang salitang first fruits na ginamit ni Pablo dito uh, uh, it indicates something to follow. Meaning, may kasunod. And that something would be his followers. Tayo na mga mananampalataya, the rest of the crops na tinutukoy ni Apostol Pablo. Ang pagkabuhay muli ni Jesus ang garantiya na tayo'y muling bubuhayin. In fact, His resurrection requires our resurrection. At para mawala ang agam-agam ng mga Christian sa Korinto patungkol sa kung anong klasing katawan ang magiging katawan ng tao kapag ito ay nabuhay muli, Paul explained to them the nature of our resurrected bodies and how they would differ from our earthly bodies. Inalimbawa ni Apostol Pablo ang ating katawang namatay bilang isang buto or seed at sa pamamakitan ng seed na iyan, manggagaling ang ating panibagong katawan katulad ng katawan ng ating Panginoon Jesus. Maliwanag ito sa unang kumento, kapitulo 15 versikulo 49 and even sa Philippians 3.21. Tulad ng ating Panginoon na ating, ang ating katawang nabubulok, pangit sabi niya, mahina, ay mapapalitan ng bagong katawan na di na mabubulok. Ito ay maganda, malakas, at it is an spiritual body. Our spiritual bodies will be perfectly equipped for heavenly, supernatural living. This is the truth that we need to accept and believe. Christ resurrected from the grave so that we have hope beyond the grave. Jesus' resurrection is our hope. We will not remain in the grave when we die, but we will be resurrected when Jesus return. Put your trust on Him and commit your lives to Jesus by obeying His will. Thank you very much for listening and have a blessed morning to all of you.